So the fourth topic of uh, of the course uh, considers the pollution control and especially that how to set the targets for the pollution control. And uh, uh, when discussing the targets, we will often refer to the distinction between so-called flow pollution and stock pollution. And I'll start by clarifying what does this distinction mean. So let's take a few examples first. So think about, for example, noise pollution or, or light pollution. They are like prime examples of uh, flow pollutants. So if you if you turn off the light or if you turn off the source of the noise, then the um, uh, damage will, uh, will stop affecting immediately. There are also some air pollutants which have very, very short lifetime, like uh, such as uh, sulfur dioxide, which can be meaningfully um, modeled as, uh, as flow pollutants. So the difference to the stock pollutants then uh, is that uh, the stock pollutants have a longer lifetime in the in the environment and they continue to cause damage also even if you switch off the source of the pollution. So I have here a couple of examples. Uh, a nuclear waste has of course a really long uh, uh, long um, lifetime that it continues to radiate uh, perhaps hundreds of years. Uh, uh, heavy metals, chemical waste uh, are also examples that they can accumulate to the nature and continue to cause damage uh, for a long time. And then if we, if we think about uh, uh, the climate change, our, our very, very uh, uh, tricky problem currently, then also uh, one problem with the, with the, with the Mitigating climate change is that uh, carbon dioxide and other other greenhouse gases they accumulate in the atmosphere and continue to to um, contribute to the global warming even if we stop uh, stop emitting uh, carbon dioxide today. So in the textbook of by Permana et al. there is this kind of um, flow chart that can can also be helpful to understand this linkage between uh, economic activity and the, and the pollution damage. So if we start from the top part of the diagram, so there is some uh, economic activity. You can think about, for example, some kind of uh, a production plan emitting some, some, uh, some pollution. So that flows to the, to the natural environment. Uh, um, and, and there is also this um, distinction of this uh, environmental media. So this, this uh, can, can flow, for example, with water to the water system, or it can be through air. So there's always some kind of, kind of um, medium that then transports this, uh, this uh, emission flow into the environment. And then during this kind of uh, transmission, of course, there may be some absor absorption of some proportion of this flow. So if we, I mentioned there this um, uh, noise pollution or light pollution, then of course uh, some part of the noise may be not causing any damage to anybody. So there, this is uh, this is the example of the absor absorption. But then there is this uh, non-absorbed part, uh, which then uh, then can cause damage. And then there is this two 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 arrows down from this non-absorbed emissions. Uh, uh, one is accumulating to a pollutant stock. Another is this kind of immediate flow pollution damage that then, then causes some harm to, to some, some recipient or to the, to the nature. So this is this main distinction that, uh, that does this kind of uh, uh, emission accumulate in the, in the environment, causing then this kind of stock pollution damage, or does it cause just immediate damage? And, and then when we think about this, uh, this box of this uh, accumulation of uh, pollutant stock, so there's also two arrows. So, so, so over time, of course, this uh, pollutant stock is also going to be degraded to, into harmless forms. So I mentioned this example of nuclear waste. So of course, o over time, also this uh, um, radioactive material becomes less and less uh, less and less radioactive. So over time, even even uh, even nuclear waste would uh, would uh, degrade into into harmless form. 
the problem is that it takes very long time until until that will that will happen so this uh, this kind of uh, accumulated nuclear waste will uh, if if left to the to the to the natural environment it would continue to cause uh, uh, damage for a very long time and same is also true for accumulation of uh, of uh, heavy metals chemical waste and as i mentioned also the carbon dioxide so now if we if we look at more specifically to certain certain air pollutants uh, so in the following uh, diagram that I also also took from the permanent al textbook, um, so there is uh, there are examples of eight different uh, uh, air pollutants, and the uh, main point I want to highlight here is that uh, that uh, whether it is meaningful to model these uh, these different pollutants as uh, as flow pollution or stock pollution. It essentially depends on this uh, atmospheric lifetime of the of the pollutant. So I have highlighted that with the with the red color, the, the in the rightmost column. So um, according to this table, the the first uh, is is carbon dioxide, which is contributing to the global warming. So the atmospheric lifetime is uh, estimated to be something between five years to two hundred years. So, so clearly, this uh, this uh, lifetime of carbon dioxide in atmosphere is 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 rather long. So even if we, uh, as I mentioned already, even if we uh, stop emitting carbon dioxide today completely, anyway, these uh, emissions that already exist there in the atmosphere they are going to continue to contribute to the global warming for for uh, several uh, decades or centuries even. Uh, so this this lifetime then then uh, then uh, depends. Uh, so there is uh, there is certain uh, um, certain air pollutants that have uh, have a very long atmospheric lifetime, and therefore those are meaningful to model as 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 stock pollutant. But then that comes to the to the more local type of air pollutants such as sulfur and uh, nitro nitrogen oxides. The the Two bottom rows of this. Uh, so, if the if the atmospheric lifetime is uh, is uh, approximately one week or less, then uh, even though it does accumulate in the in the atmosphere, but the lifetime is so short, then then uh, it it seems meaningful to to model such kind of uh, pollutants more as a, as a flow pollution because anyway, if the if the source of the pollution um uh, if if the pollution stops at the source then uh, then um there is not very long time effects with this with these pollutants so therefore this distinction between what is a flow pollutant and and what is stock pollutant essentially just uh, uh, depends on that uh, that uh, how long time this uh, this um pollutant is is uh, um, continuing to cause damage in the in the nature, and uh, and uh, there is not any clear cut boundary, but but if we talk about uh, days or maybe maybe a couple of weeks maximum, then uh, then it is very short term, and then it is kind of uh, this kind of flow pollution damages um, are essential, but if it is uh, if the lifetime is is measured in in years or decades or maybe centuries, then definitely. We need to take into account this kind of uh, accumulation and and this kind of stock pollution nature of the of the of the pollutant. So I will refer to this distinction when we next uh, consider this uh, optimal level or efficient level of pollution. But that will be the topic of the next video lesson. See you then.